Hey everyone, this is Anna here, and I just wanted to make a quick video on this technique, cuerda seca, which I've done before, but here I'm using, uh, I'm painting on a mug, so it will be fired vertically. And just as an overview, I already painted my line work on bisque, uh, bisque ware using the same recipe on, on my, I have a three-part video on this technique. And I use that same recipe on part one that I explain how I mix it, which is a oil mixture. So the oil is a resist. And here I used black iron oxide instead of uh, red iron oxide, which I used in the past. So I wanted to make my lines black. So I used black iron oxide. So I just painted my line work with that. And I'm using uh, Mako Stroke and Coat, and I use these little bottles with a with a tip that is bent that I found on Amazon, and I'll put the link um, in my description for you guys to if you're interested in buying. I'm not being sponsored or anything by this company, but um, it's uh, pretty good. It works out really well because it's already bent. Uh, so I found it easier to use. And as you can see here, uh, the nice thing about this stroke and coat by Mako, it's that you can mix different colors. So I use different shades of green for these leaves and even like a little bit of uh, lime green or lime, lime yellow. I can't remember now all the, the shades that I use, but some of them are, I know it's a jade. It's one of my favorite colors. Uh, I believe it's this one here that I'm using. It's called jade. Uh, Lipping Lizard is another real pretty green that I like. Um, I can't remember the other ones, but they were all on the light to dark shades of green with a little blue even. Um, and my lines were quite thin that I drew or I painted with the oil. And some of them, if I'm not careful, it goes over them because they are so thin. And I didn't care that much if some of them got obliterated. <laughs> uh, but um, if you make a mistake, as you see here in a little bit, I believe I, I captured that. I use uh, this graffito tool to scrape off the, the glaze. If you go over a line that you didn't want it, you can just wait until the, the glaze is dry, go and go over and scrape that off to clean you know, the line work. Uh, I am going to have another video soon that I will be using this technique. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, using just a pencil. So you can Use just the pencil and the graphite will act as your resist, creating like, it, it almost like creates a little fence around the areas where you want to just flood with the, the glaze like you see in this video. It's very, uh, it's a very satisfying technique. I really like it and I like the results that it becomes uh, almost like re a relief work it, it has a real nice texture because it's raised uh, the glazes become raised because they're applied so thick thickly uh, within the lines and then the lines of course is dry that's why it's called cuerda seca or dry rope or dry cord there are different translations but it's usually that that's basically that's what it is uh, because your line work be, uh, remains dry and then the glazed area is, is all the flooded area that you paint around it. Uh, and before that, when I, this is a wheel thrown uh, mug and um, it was very simple. I, I tried to keep it simple by just adding the little frog right a leather hard i attached that and i wanted to look like the frog was just sitting on the leaf and uh, i believe i achieved that that what i wanted and um, 
like I said, I kept it simple, the design, and I like that I'm just mixing the different colors of the glazes for the leaves. And then um, I was trying to decide once I, I'm done here, you'll see here in a minute. I have a few different tiles that I tested previously uh, just to see with the same stoneware, which is a speckled brown stoneware. And I had a few choices here to decide which which color I wanted for the rest of the of the mug. You see here I am cleaning, just scraping it off a little bit with I didn't want the glaze to be. And I'll show you soon here the, the choices I had. I ended up going with the Mako frosted lemon is called which is a new glaze to me and uh, the first firing I, I wasn't crazy about the combination that I used uh, where it didn't run the glaze that I put over it didn't run like I wanted to run almost to look like a waterfall so I had to refire put more uh, like a flux over that to make it run more and then I did a second firing and then it finally worked the way I wanted to. And you see here. So here are my samples like the that was the frosted lemon. This is uh, Norse Blue by Mako also with the with the flux and this is um, the two. So I was undecided between the two the blue and the the yellow and I went with the yellow. And I really like the effects. And that was, again, the second firing. You see how I have the, the flux made it really run. And then the, I love the, love the inside as well. So this is exactly like I wanted. Thanks for watching, guys.